Hi, I'm Turk Strongman at the Ranki Ramachiraka. Thank you for selecting this video on grief and sorrow. Before I continue, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, then please take the moment to, right now to do that. I think it's in your own best interests. And while you're at it, activate the notification bell feature. If by the end of this video you find that you liked it, please give it a thumb up. If you find that you didn't like it, give it your other thumb up. And share the joy of the channel with others. Now let's move on. Grief and sorrow. What do those words apply to? Excuse me. I have a hair tickling my nose. Grief and sorrow are meant to state that follow the death of a loved one. So this has to do with mourning. Mourning, death, I mean, uh, grief, sorrow, mourning. Okay. So what to say? Why am I making this video in the first place? A friend of mine recently suffered the loss of a parent. <clears throat> and I said that I'll make a video on behalf of that person, as well as for everybody here. But what to say? It's none of my business to tell somebody how to grieve, how to mourn, how to get past such an event. I'm not going to try to do that. So what to say? Well, I'm going to start out with two experiences of my own. First of all, just a general thing about things that I don't want to let go of. I don't want to let go of. I don't want to move forward from. I find it difficult. I'm not just talking about a loved one in this case. I'm talking about conditions, things, people, events. I even wrote a book, a little book, right here. Wild and Free on the Lower East Side. That's New York City, Manhattan, Lower East Side. Nine true stories from the 70s and 80s in New York City. <clears throat> in my introduction, right here, I wrote, I feel painfully, oh, goodness, come on, excuse me again, I feel painfully saddened that important people in our lives, places that mold us, events that shape our characters, and circumstances from which we select our destinies, fade into the past as though they never existed. Moreover, some things are just flat out too good to let go without attempting to immortalize them. In this book, I attempt to immortalize certain people, places, events, and circumstances that I believe have faded too rapidly from the world. These true unique stories represent the struggle for freedom, the will to survive, and the power to love in the cold, hard light of day. So there, I give you that just to let you know that I don't like to see things fade into the past as though they never exist. Things that are worth remembering, holding on to, even wishing they were still the case. <clears throat> now, on to something more specific. I remember the death of my mother. She died of ovarian cancer. I don't know, 15 years ago? Something like that? Yeah, about 15 years ago. I took care of her by myself for the last, oh, I don't know, six months of her life. She was dying of cancer. 
I had promised her when I was six years old, when she became old and needed help, I wouldn't let her go to a nursing home. I'd take care of her. I was six years old. And she said, oh, son, you're, you're only six years old. You're going to forget that. You're going to forget all about that. I appreciate you saying that, but I'm not going to count on it. Well, 15 years ago, I remembered that. And I did it. It was very difficult. It was very difficult to watch that happen to her. It wore me out really wore me out and wore me down. And I was there holding her hand when she took her last breath. There were other family members, but they didn't help her. It was just me. And then, I guess, <clears throat> when the moment arrives from that point on, to find out what those others who were close to the deceased what they're really made of. Or even just friends of yours, what they're really made of. Because at that last moment, and then from that last moment onward, you may find that people show characteristics that you didn't expect. You never knew before. You might find that your friends don't talk to you anymore. You might find that some family members resent you. You might find that there's a struggle over inheritance. You might find that there are some, that there's been some wrong information passed around about inheritance. It might become an inheritance thing. You might lose contact with certain family members. Others may grow closer to you unexpectedly. All manner of things may happen. One of the most notable things, though, is that in large, people don't know what to say. They just don't know what to say. What do you say? Some won't say much at all. I remember when my mother died, I contacted probably the only the longest standing friend that I had in life. He lived in a different state. I told him what happened. His only comment was, well, it's part of the cycle of life. I felt really put off by that. I thought, geez, maybe it would have been better if he didn't say anything. Yeah, what do you say? What do I say here? Huh? What do I say? Well, here's what I have to say. I promised this video a couple of weeks ago, by the way. Just a couple of days after the unfortunate event. But I didn't get to it till now. Maybe it's because I didn't know really what to say. But... What I'm going to say now is the same as what I would have said if I had delivered this video when I said I would. <clears throat> Please take this with an open mind, people. And again, this is not telling you how to grieve. This is telling you a way to think about this thing called death. That perhaps you already know. But when the time really comes, you might forget. In the words of Chief Seattle, Native American Chief Seattle, there is no death, only a change of worlds. Well, look. 
What is death? What is this thing? How about, for the moment, for the time being here, we put aside that word. It has a lot of connotations, a lot of baggage, a lot of emotional baggage that comes along with it. And we learn this baggage from childhood. All of our lives, starting way back in the early childhood, the first time we, as a small child, see something die. Our first pet, it dies. Or grandma dies. And we're told that it's gone to heaven. We don't know what that is. But we're told that it's better than here. So be happy. And the other thing we're told is that what this all means is that grandma's not on vacation this time. Or our dog Spot has not run away again. Neither dog, neither Spot nor grandma are coming back this time. Never going to see them again. They're not coming back. They've gone to heaven. And then, through life, we attend funerals. We see people cry. We hear people scream. We hear people saying, if only grandma would come back. I want, I want, I want grandma back, whatever. We get all these ideas built up, emotional ideas built up about this thing called death. <clears throat> and we often hear things like, I saw a dead man laying on the road. As I went, you know, by the car crash, There was a dead man laying there. Or I saw cousin Milton. You know, I, I stopped by the funeral home and, you know, I wanted to talk about some arrangements, maybe paying for some things, you know. And there was a door open that I walked by and I could see him laying back there, you know, on the slab. There he was. There are a lot of misconceptions going on in these kind of things, this kind of thinking, all of this kind of thinking. What really happens hmm, is the physical body without the life force that integrates it into a, what we call a living, sentient, Organism. There is life force in the atoms, in the molecules, life force that integrates the atoms into molecules, life force that integrates the molecules into cells, life force that integrates the cells into organs life force that integrates the functionings of the organs into an organism. When this thing that we call mm, happens, the life force leaves certain levels of that chain of integrations. It leaves the organism It leaves the organs. It leaves the cells. It doesn't really leave the molecules. It certainly doesn't leave the atoms. So we have a disintegration of the organism. 
and a disintegration of the organs. They're no longer held together and functioning as one thing. And they come apart, they disintegrate back to their original elements from which they were initially constructed. Elements of the earth, the physical plane of the earth. And there's still life force there at that physical level in those elements. <clears throat> And then they are available to reintegrate into new life forms, more complex life forms, new organisms, plant or animal. What about the life force? What about the emotional body, the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, and so forth? Well, those are made of substances of the that correspond with the planes to which they belong. And what happens with them? That's a different matter here. But there's still life force in those. At least for a while. What we're calling mm -hmm, here, we're just talking about the physical thing. But has the person died? Has the person moved? Mm, well, a part, the physical part, is disintegrating. That's a much better word because that's what's really, really happening. When we say, mm hmm. I mean, it carries with it so much more than that. And a lot of our emotional response to mm, happening is built around those connotations that don't really have to be there. The fact is that this thing called mm it's somewhat of a fallacy. It's not what's really going on. Life is in everything. Life is everywhere. All the universe is alive. Things integrate, and then things disintegrate. And then they reintegrate in new ways. But there is some core, especially if a, if a person has achieved true selfhood, it cannot be annihilated under any circumstances. But that notwithstanding, not even considering that, The disintegration of the physical body is only the disintegration of the physical body. And as Chief Seattle said, once again, there is no death. Only a change of worlds. Now, we may have at some point in our lives come to understand that. But chances are, it's not the first idea we had in life about this thing called mm. And when mm appears to happen to somebody really close to us, a parent, a child, a sibling, husband, wife, this understanding that we arrived at at some point in our lives, which wasn't the initial one, kind of seems to fall away. 
and we get the emotional response it hits us of that other mm, with all its connotations and it's difficult to get past that to get past our emotional responses this idea that the person is dead the person the whole person is dead good idea to try very hard to remember that a good bit of our emotionality at that time comes from misunderstandings that have been placed into our awareness ever since we were small children. And then it gets supported when people don't say anything. When others are crying like crazy. When others are wearing all black. When there's a funeral. When all this morbidity happens. <clears throat> when arguments arise. When everything seems to be upside down and those around us. <laughs> Other than responses, emotional responses perhaps build upon some misconceptions. What there is is missing the person's physical presence and perhaps along with that another thing that's probably not so healthy and that is we're seeing the person we're back and that's probably not a good idea because that has an effect on the so-called deceased deceased and yeah that deceased is without the physical body now but in the world in which that person is now in that person needs to move along and the stronger the desires are from those still incarnate for that person to not move anywhere but come back instead tends to hold back that person's moving on in the world in which they now live <clears throat> so if i am going to if i were to venture into telling you how to mourn or how not to that would be the only thing Try to refrain from your selfishness, wanting that person back. Because that's not helping that person. Loving thoughts, sure. Sure. But don't let those blend into, try not to let those blend into, wanting the person to be back, wishing the person was still here. Is just like all things move forward all the time. That person needs to move forward too. Try not to hold them back. Wish them well. If you're going to hold any thoughts that have a strong emotional endowment regarding such a thing, try to let them be thoughts and feelings and emotions that involve giving that person the, your permission to go on. Go. Move on. Carry on. Your work is done. And you try to remember that too. 
grandma's work is done here. It's finished. It's done. She did it. Good. This is a hard work. It's a very tough world. It, physical life has a sting to it. But now it's done. Good. Carry on. You made it. You pulled through. Go. And let that physical body return to his elements. Disintegrate. It'll reintegrate into new things. Nothing is lost. Things have just moved forward. They have changed their states. That's all I have to say. Did you like the video? Thumb up. Did you dislike it? Other thumb up. Subscribe. Activate the notification bell feature. Share the joy of the channel with others. I'm Turk Strawman. This is the Ron Kiran Be well.